Today I want to share with you the top 15 prepper pantry items you need to buy now at Costco. Hi sweet friends, I'm Mary and welcome to Mary's Nest where I teach traditional cooking skills for making nutrient-dense foods like bone broth ferment, sourdough, and more. So if you enjoy learning how to be a modern pioneer in the kitchen, consider subscribing to my channel. And don't forget to click on the little notification bell below that'll let you know every time I upload a new video. Well, before we get to the food, I always like to take a little time to go through the aisle where the kitchen products are. I just wanted to share this with you if you're in the market for one of those food saver sealing type devices. They actually have the food saver here for $99.99. Now I haven't checked on the price of this recently, uh, but that it's just good to know that they have it here. And they've also got their brand of sealing bags, which for $23.99 seems like a good deal. Now I know you've asked me many times about my teapot, the electric teapot I have back in my kitchen. Unfortunately, that one has been out of stock and I don't even know if they make it anymore. However, this seems like a good price for $39.99 and it's glass, which is nice. Now, don't worry about that tea infuser inside because that can be removed and then you just have a nice glass teapot. But if you, electric teapot, it's got the base down here. Now, if you're comfortable using something, that is stainless steel and you want to put your loose tea in here, that's fantastic. Now I just wanted to show you these blenders because this is one of those high speed blenders and it's only $69.99, which seems like a very low price because often when you see these, especially like the Vitamix, you know, they're well into the hundreds of dollars, uh, but it does crush ice. And so if you're in the market for a blender, this might be a good buy. Now this one is the same brand, but it's considerably more expensive, but it comes with some of the things for doing smoothies and you know that you can take with you and so on and so forth. Uh, but that's something to consider too if you've been looking in the market for one of these. And what's kind of neat about this one is that it also sort of does double duty as like a food processor because it comes with these blades that you must fit in the top because the top, as you see, is quite wide and big and you can shred cabbage, onions, you know, whatever you want, and then make your ferments. So this might be something to consider if you've been thinking about a blender and or a food processor. This may be able to do the job of both. So now speaking of Vitamix, they've got it here. And as you see, it's $319.99. So these are a lot more expensive, but they may do a lot more. I, I think that if you get the right container, and I don't know if this one would qualify, you can grind grain. Uh, you'd have to, you know, really read the box in detail and or call the manufacturer and find out if you can grind grain with that container. Uh, but this is something to look at. I think when it comes to these type of products, blenders, whether it's the Vitamix or the Ninja, food processors, whatever the case may be, if you have a membership to one of these big box stores like Costco, which we're in today, or even a Sam's Club, you can often get a pretty good price on these. So this is interesting. I've seen this multiple times when I've come here to Costco. It's $169.99, so it's expensive. And it's basically a slow cooker that's made by Instant Pot. The only difference is it's cast iron inside this pot here, not enameled cast iron, just actual regular cast iron. And so they're talking about that you can braise and this, that, and the other thing, you know, brown and all of that in it. Then you put the lid on, then you set your time, and it is programmable for what you want to do. And then when it's done, you can bring it to the table. So it's interesting, you know, it's intriguing. But if you have an Instant Pot, you can already do a lot of these things in your Instant Pot. You know, it usually has like a braise and saute options and whatnot. Uh, and I don't believe this does not, you know, this is not like the Instant Pot in terms of the, um, the pressure cooking aspect of it. It's basically just like a fancy slow cooker. So I think if you have a nice enameled traditional slow cooker, that's fine. And, and I really would prefer making my bone broths in an enameled slow cooker 
uh, that you've tested and you know you can buy the little test strips to make sure that it's lead free those you can find it online or at a pharmacy uh, as opposed to making my bone broth in unlined cast iron because unlined cast iron may be more reactive with certain things that you're putting in your bone broth like the acids that we use whether it's a fortified wine or you know some lemon juice or some apple cider vinegar whatever you like to use to leach the minerals and uh, primarily leaching the collagen out of the bones and so that might uh, affect the flavor because it'd be a little reactive with that I just wanted to take a minute and stop and show this to you now I don't have this this is one of those multi-purpose, I call them toaster ovens, but they basically do everything. I have one that's made by the Emeril Lagasse kitchen line of products, and mine has the little French doors, and but it's square like this, and I love it. And it's not so big that it can't still fit under my cabinets on my counter. And the reason I really like these, kind of these new toaster ovens that they're making that are a little bigger, is because living in Central Texas, where it's so hot most of the year, and I don't want to turn the oven on, I can roast a whole chicken in, in the tabletop model that I have. And also, too, it just comes in handy, especially, over the, especially regarding the fact that I just have the one oven. I don't have double ovens, so if for any reason I need two ovens, I've got that right handy. So this one is $189. I may have paid less for mine. I'm not sure. I don't remember. I've had it a little while now. And as I said, mine has the French doors that open up. This one just opens straight down like this. So it's really personal preference. But this does do air frying, bake, broil. It's a dehydrator. You know, so it's kind of neat that they're coming out with these different little tabletop, it's what I call tabletop ovens or toaster ovens that are multi-purpose. They can do a lot of things so you don't need to have the toaster oven and the air fryer and the dehydrator. You can kind of get a multi-purpose one-stop shop item. Now I just wanted to take a minute to look at these. I don't use these type of silicone bags but I know you've shared with me that you do and that some of you do. And I thought that this was interesting to see that they are carrying them here at Costco. And they're $19.99. I'm not sure about this price. I have seen these online a lot and they've always struck me as expensive. So this might be kind of on the expensive side. Not 100% sure. It seems like you get three little ones and then three sort of medium sized ones that can hold a sandwich or something like that. Sorry, it's crowded in here and there's a lot going on. <laughs> but uh, this, this might be something for you to look at if it's something you've been in the market for. If you're in the market for these type of baking sheets, this is a really good buy because it's $23.99. Yes, I know you can find them less expensive, uh, but these are high quality. They are so heavy. And what I like is they're made in the USA. So if you're in the USA and you like to buy things that are made here, this is really great. And it works out, what, to be less, a little less than $12 a baking sheet. So you can't beat that. And if you're on the beginning of your journey, if you're at the beginning of your journey, moving from a processed foods kitchen to a traditional foods kitchen, and maybe you just don't have a big roasting pan yet, but you want to make a roast chicken, this will do you such wonderful double duty because you can make all kinds of things on here. As they're showing, they've got cookies, they've got a mixed meal with like salmon and veggies. And you always hear of these sheet pan suppers. You know, I think there's even a cookbook called sheet pan suppers. And so having a baking sheet like this, and here you've got two, you can't go wrong. And that's a good price because these are high quality. Now, right next to the baking sheets was this griddle, and so I wanted to share this with you also, especially with the warmer weather coming. You may want to just pop this onto your stove, and you can have a griddle right there to do steaks or chicken or fish or even a breakfast. Now, this doesn't have the grids in it, so you're not going to get you know the grill marks but it is a nice flat griddle that i think you can really do a lot with it's 29.99 but it's a very good quality and it's made in america now what's nice is it's pretty light my cat okay, now it's not cast iron it's non-stick but it is a high quality cast iron it's a premium non-stick made without pfoa 
uh, which is the PFOA is what people are concerned about, the chemical uh, that is often used when making nonstick pans. So this doesn't contain it, so that's a good sign. But it is, it's nice because it's lightweight if you find lifting your cast. If you have a cast iron griddle, which I do, uh, it's quite heavy to lift. Uh, so this is nice, but also too, it's slightly angled and it has a ridge here. So if you're making something like bacon on the stove top, it will, uh, all the grease will dr drain into this little well here. And it's got these little bit of high sides that depending on what you're cooking, it can kind of keep uh, the splatter mess down, which is always a problem whenever you're trying to grill something or griddle something, you know. Uh, so this is kind of a nice item. And I feel since it's made by Nordic Ware and it's made in the US, it's a good price, it's a fair price. And if you're wondering, I don't know if you can see this because it's a little smaller, but it does say you can use it on the grill, which that's kind of interesting. You know, if you're doing a barbecue and you want to put something uh, onto your grill that might otherwise fall through the grates, this could be very handy for using like in an outside kitchen uh, setup, uh, especially say during the hot summer and you run out and they, the power cuts off. Uh, because you're having a blackout because everybody's running their air conditioners you could put this on your grill and you could really do a lot of good cooking uh, so but it does work on an electric stove a gas stove and it says here that it is safe for a ceramic top stove so it seems to cover all the all the different options now I wanted to mention that they do have the glass snapware here which is nice. The bottom is glass and the top has those really wonderful airtight seals. And that this is plastic though, but it's beautiful in terms of really keeping food fresh. And you might recognize this size, which I have. Actually, I have this set uh, because this is the one I use when I make the homemade cream cheese and it's perfect for it and it makes it like a nice little mold just like something you might buy in the store. Now it's $24.99 but I think this is a pretty good price and keep your eyes open because they often do put this on sale and you never know maybe in your part of the country wherever you're looking uh, wherever you're shopping uh, your Costco may have this on sale. I have seen this uh, for $19.99, sometimes even less. So definitely keep your eyes open. They do have the plastic ones, which maybe if you have young children or you just want something lighter, that is an option. It's $19.99, but I think for $5 more to get the glass is what I would prefer to do. And then also, because I know some of you have told me you love the brilliance, and I like these too. I have a few of the large ones, but I actually keep things like baking soda in them. Uh, what's nice about these is that they also have those very, it's even a little hard to get off, tight uh, air, uh, you know, they do have the airproof seal. Uh, and these are very sturdy. Uh, and like most of this, they're all made with plastics, you know, that are considered safer and with less chemicals in them. So three good options, the brilliance, the glass ones. They also, as I said, have the plastic. I would prefer the glass, but you do have the plastic option if you want something uh, that is just lighter. Now, I just want to mention quickly, if you're organizing your pantry, your four corners pantry, to include your fridge and your freezer, you know, as well as your working pantry and your prepper or extended pantry, I know a lot of us have looked at using these plastic bins and often, I don't know if you've looked for these on Amazon, these can start to really get expensive. Uh, but what's nice is they've got four bins here and sometimes, yes, it's $19.99 and sometimes, you know, it's not going to be $5. <laughs> but uh, for $19.99, you get four here. So this is the size for all four of them. E each one is this size and there's four of them in the box. And what's nice is you can organize all your little different things that you may have, your spices, different packages, whatever the case may be. And even if you're making a lot of your own spice mixes and then you seal them, maybe using your food saver or something similar, and you can line them all up in here, and then you can just put them right on your pantry shelf and then pull them out very easily. I use this size, which I love in my prepper pantry, 
for my canned fish, like my sardines and things like that. And the sardine cans fit in really nicely. And then I put them right into my, uh, into my prepper pantry. And what's good about these is that they do stack. So they don't have lids, but I almost prefer it without lids because sometimes when you start stacking with lids, you have to take it off, you have to take off the lid, it can get kind of involved. But they do stack, and so you can stack them and then you know put more canned fish or whatever, whatever you want. So definitely think of these if you're in the market for these plastic bins. This is a good buy, so you can actually, in this aisle, in the kitchen product aisle, you have a lot of choices of things for storage if you're in the market for storage items. So if you belong to a Costco and Sam's off and Sam's Club, you know, they have very similar things too. And you may even probably find them at Walmart since Walmart and Sam's are connected. Definitely look for these. And you know, as we go into spring, this can be a really good time after we've gone through all the pantry challenges and we've been making pantry meals and we've been doing inventories. Hopefully you downloaded all the inventory sheets I had for you, which free, no email required, and you can easily do your uh, inventory. As we go into spring, before we start really doing a big restock, this can be a really good time to see what we may need in terms of supplies to store everything properly. Well, now that we've gone through kitchen supplies and equipment, let's move on to the food. And while we're at it, don't forget to download my free 36 page essential traditional foods pantry list, which shows you everything that you need to stock your pantry, your, your full four corners pantry, your working pantry, your fridge, your freezer, and your prepper pantry. And it's not just a list of things I go through all the details on how to prepare a lot of these things homemade, as well as how to use them in various recipes to make meals. So I don't leave you just high and dry with a list. I give you a lot of good information. So I was on my way to the food, but I saw the shelving, and so I wanted to just highlight this because this is very popular. A lot of folks like to use this in their prepper pantries or in their garages, and it can go in and out of stock. As you see, they don't have a ton. Even the one that's uh, normally up here is gone. Maybe somebody bought it already assembled. Uh, but they do go to together pretty quickly, and they come with wheels. You have the option to put the wheels on or not, but it's nice with the wheels because it's easy to move around, especially the ones we have in our garage are great that they have wheels because sometimes where they're positioned in our garage, we may need to move them for one reason or another. So we can do that with these. And $119, I know this is something, you know, that everybody may have to save up for, uh, but if you are in the market for shelving, you can't go wrong with this. I have been so happy with this, and I think it's really well made, and it's very, very useful, especially during these times when we want to make sure that we are having a well-stocked prepper pantry. Now, I just want to mention that I know in the past when I've come to Costco, you've had some trouble hearing me because it can get very noisy in here and we're going to go into a section that's quite noisy, not just people, but a lot of machines and whatnot going. But I did get a mic for you, and so hopefully you can hear me a lot clearer. I also want to mention that if you just kind of want to do one-stop shopping, They've got lots of plastic containers and they've got them in all different sizes, including those Instacrates, which if you've seen those before, they're completely flat and then you can just kind of open them up and they create a, a plastic box or a plastic crate. So you've got a big selection of all prices and all sizes so you can do one-stop shopping. Now I'm in the perishable section where they've got the fresh fruits and vegetables and then the cheeses and the chickens and all of that. Today I'm really going to focus on items for the prepper pantry, which means the items that are non-perishable. But Costco, as well as Sam's Club, has a huge variety of fruits and vegetables. Now, I know it can vary from region to region, depending on what you might have in your particular Costco or Sam's Club, but they often have a pretty good selection of both organic and non-organic. And as I've shared with you in the past, don't worry about getting organic. Buy what you can afford, stay in your budget. But they've got a great selection. And so definitely take some time and look around. And the nice thing is, if you like to buy in bulk, this is the place to buy in bulk. 
because their price per pound is usually pretty good and you can get really big packages of things. And so this can be a good option if you don't have a farmer's market available to you where you might be able to buy produce by the case or maybe you're just sort of at the beginning of your gardening journey and so you're not gardening and so you're not necessarily harvesting large quantities of fruits and vegetables but you want to dehydrate or you want to freeze dry this can be a really good place to shop for fresh fruits fresh fruits and vegetables that's a tough one to say the next item you want to look for when you come to these big box stores is water because you can often get a nice big package of bottled water for a reasonable price here Kirkland's got the purified water the Kirkland brand it's the Costco brand of purified water for $3.99 for 40 bottles it's always good no matter what your situation is to make sure that you do stock some bottled water if you prefer to stock spring water they've got that too now it is more expensive but it is 40 bottles I want to show you that if you like to get coconut water this is the place to get it this is organic and it's just coconut water it doesn't have any other ingredients in it and you can get 12 of these containers and they're 330 milliliters or 11 fluid ounces a little more than 11 fluid ounces in each carton and it's non-perishable you know until you open it obviously and it's 11.99 for all 12 organic and just coconut water no other added ingredients so you can't beat this because I know individual containers like this at my grocery store are going to be more expensive and I'm not going to be able to find ones that are organic and just coconut water that's the big problem that I've found when I try to search out coconut water it often has added ingredients but this doesn't so if you're at Costco I don't know if Sam's carries something similar this is the Kirkland brand but you can't go wrong great price great product also under the coconut umbrella I want to also mention that they do carry organic coconut milk it's $12.99 for six cans and another coconut product not to be missed if you like having coconut water coconut milk then you're going to want coconut oil and this is $13.99 it's organic it's cold pressed it's unrefined and it's 84 fluid ounces so this is a lot of coconut oil and you can't beat that price and don't forget when we stock our prepper pantry when we're the ones in charge of stocking the prepper pantry as I've shared with you in the past it's more than just about stocking food and I'll be sure to link to that video when I go over all the things that you should have to be prepared for any emergency that might come your way and one thing that you want to make sure that you stock up on so that you don't run out on or don't run out of is bath tissue also known as toilet paper but my mother always called it bath tissue and that's what the packaging says as well so make sure that you stock up on bath tissue and then this way if you have one or two packages to back you up you're not going to be the person rushing to the grocery store in an emergency and then trying to find some bath tissue and find that it's all sold out so whenever you're at a big box store it's a good time to buy one package and just stock it uh, stock it away and remember those shelves I showed you earlier when we were going through all the kitchen supplies those shelves can be very helpful for stocking items like this whether it's bath tissue or other type items in this family or dishwashing liquid whatever you buy those shelves can be great for stocking these things and stocking them maybe in a garage if you don't have a really large dedicated area for your prepper pantry like me I don't have a large area so I prim primarily keep my food products in my prepper pantry in a little closet and then somewhere other little areas around my house and then these bigger items I'm able to store in my garage now I know it does vary because you may be dealing with rodentia <laughs> as I like to say uh, but luckily in our garage we don't have that problem but that's definitely when you come to these big box stores definitely look and consider about stocking up on bath tissue now if you don't have the silicone baking sheets or the silicone baking mats whatever you call them maybe you just don't like the idea of using the silicone and you want to use natural vegetable parchment paper this is fantastic and it's a great buy it's only $12.99 
for two really heavy boxes. Each one has 164 feet of parchment paper. And parchment paper comes in so handy because if you do a lot of those no need sourdough breads or even no need yeast risen breads where you put them into the hot Dutch oven and you use parchment paper to lift them down, this is great. If you have a dehydrator and you don't have the silicone mats for when you're dehydrating something small, you can just cut some parchment paper and use that in place. And this, the nice thing about this particular brand that Kirkland carries is it is made in France. It is actual vegetable parchment paper, so it's a, a very healthy option and it's very versatile because you can not only line your baking sheet with it, which is how we traditionally uh, will use it. As I mentioned, it's going to come in handy for bread baking and dehydrating, as well as a whole host of other things. If you like to cook things in parchment, where you wrap it up and often have maybe fish and vegetables, it's just so multi-purpose. You can't go wrong. You need to have parchment paper in a traditional foods kitchen. There's so many uses for it. And at $12.99, this is actually a good buy uh, for this high quality parchment paper, and it is made in France. Now, under normal circumstances, I wouldn't recommend using plastic utensils and plastic plates or paper plates, plastic cups, paper cups, whatever the, whatever the case may be. However, I do recommend keeping a supply on hand. And if you buy them at Costco and you don't use these type of things regularly, you're probably going to have a lifetime supply. But these are wonderful to keep on hand, both the utensils as well as the plates and cups for when you have to take care of people who are sick. Now, can you wash the plates and forks and spoons and all of that and keep them on a separate tray? Yes, that's something my mother always did and something that I do tend to do. However, if you find yourself in a situation like what we went through in 2020 and you're overwhelmed because you have a lot of sick people in your home at one time, having paper plates, paper cups, plastic utensils can come in very handy, especially if you yourself are ill and you're taking care of people who are ill. So, and you may not be wanting to stand at the sink and washing, you know, five, six, seven, who, who knows how many plates and cups you're doing a full service at that point. So definitely keep some of this on hand because if we ever get into another situation where we have a lot of sick people in the house at one time and we ourselves may be sick as well, this can really help out. And I've shared with you in the past, you always want to carve out an area of your prepper pantry that you think of as your emergency pantry, where you stock some perishable food, non-perishable foods and the supplies needed to prepare them when you may not have any water or any electricity, any clean running water and no electricity. And when you have no clean running water and maybe you're just relying on bottled water, you don't want to be washing plates and dishes and cups and so on and so forth. That's another situation where these various products can come in very handy. If you're a coffee drinker like me and my husband are, then definitely consider stocking the whole coffee bean in your prepper pantry instead of the ground coffee. And the reason is the whole bean has a much longer shelf life than the coffee that's already been ground. And if you're shopping at Costco or any big box store for that matter, they usually have a pretty good selection of whole beans. They'll have organic as well as non-organic, decaf as well as caffeinated. My favorite one here at Costco is the Rudamaya. But what's interesting is it seems like they have a much smaller selection of that brand. They used to have a lot. So I wonder if they're transitioning to having more of their own brand, the Kirkland brand. So that may be the case, but whatever, you, whatever type of coffee you like, you're probably going to find the type of beans that you do want to buy. They have medium roast, dark roast, espresso roast, light roast, so there's a, a wide selection. And the prices are relatively good. And they're also, when you, the one thing you want to keep in mind is when you do buy the whole bean, it's often less expensive than if you were buying, buying the ground coffee. I'm always thrilled when I find this here at Costco. This is rolled oats. They're organic and what's even better, they've been sprouted. 
So if you uh, don't want to have to soak your oats overnight and you want to just make oatmeal in the morning quick, quick, having them already sprouted for you is terrific. You can also grind this very easily because it's already been rolled. It's not the actual whole grain, the oat groat. So it's very soft and you can grind this in your blender and then you can make an oat flour and it'd be a sprouted oat flour. Plus this is guaranteed to be gluten-free. Oats are naturally gluten-free, but sometimes because of maybe where they're grown, they get contaminated or they get contaminated in the factory because the factory processes other things, whatever the case may be. So if you need guaranteed gluten-free, that's nice that these are gluten-free and they're glyphosate-free, uh, which yes, that would make sense given that they are organic. So there's no glyphosate used in terms of growing these. But this is a great buy because it's $9.99 and it's five pounds of sprouted rolled oats. Now you might be saying, Mary, why are you talking about what if I don't soak them the night before and why do I want them sprouted and this, that, and the other thing? That's because oats, like with all grains, they contain anti-nutrients which protect them when they need to sprout and grow in the wild or, you know, and just in general, you know, in farming for crops and whatnot, uh, so that the actual seed is often uh, protected with these anti-nutrients because it makes them less attractive to be eaten by birds or animals or whatever the case may be and it gives them a chance to sprout once the rains come and so that's kind of how they keep alive and keep going the drawback is those anti-nutrients if we eat them can sometimes be difficult for us to digest and difficult for us to absorb the nutrients that uh, are in the food and sometimes those anti-nutrients can also strip our body of certain vitamins and minerals. So that's why we often talk about soaking and sprouting. Now, for many people, is it the end of the world if you don't soak and sprout? No. However, it is something that if you find yourself eating a lot of foods, a lot of grains, and you're making a lot of quick breads where you're not making a sourdough, uh, but you're using either baking soda, baking powder, or you're making a lot of yeast risen breads with whole grain flours, you really want to think about using sprouted flours or sprouted grains. And the reason is because you want those anti-nutrients de deactivated if you're eating a lot of them. So if you find you eat a lot of oatmeal, and you don't get into the habit of soaking your oats the night before, whether you cook up the actual whole oat groat or you cook up some old-fashioned rolled oats, having the sprouted option can be very helpful. It can be very quick and easy for you to prepare in the morning. No matter where you shop, you're always going to find that the Manuka honey is expensive. This is $29.99, but this is actually a good price for Manuka honey. And why do you want to stock Manuka honey? Because it has wonderful medicinal properties. It's a very strong, very healthy honey, and it can really help you in situations where maybe you have a virus or a bacterial infection, Manuka honey is supposed to really help to boost your immunity. So you can't go wrong with this one. It is a New, Zealand, a New Zealand Manuka honey, which is what you want, and it's raw and unpasteurized. So you definitely get all the wonderful nutrients associated with Manuka honey. And speaking of honey, Manuka honey or otherwise, it's always smart to just keep raw honey in your prepper pantry. This is uh, honey that's not been heated or pasteurized, it's just raw. And what's nice about the Kirkland brand, it says true source certified. So you know you're really getting honey, because sadly, a lot of stuff that may be labeled honey is cut with other things. Uh, but this is organic, it's raw, and honey is a forever food. This is never going to go bad. It may crystallize, and you can easily put it in some warm water if you want to liquefy it, or you can eat it crystallized. Either way, it doesn't matter. But having some real honey on hand is very important. And it's important for a lot of reasons. Number one, if you want something that is a sweetener and you don't want to rely on white sugar, honey does, it is a sweetener, yes. And so if you have to really watch sweeteners in general, that's definitely something you want to think about. However, the nice thing about honey is it's more nutritious than just a white cane sugar. 
And secondly, it's often an ingredient that's needed to make various home remedies. And I have a whole playlist on where I show you how to make all kinds of home remedies, natural remedies, whatever you want to call them. And honey is often a very common ingredient and often a pourable honey like what you can find here. So definitely think about putting that in your prepper pantry. Another item for your prepper pantry, some type of nut butter and a peanut butter if peanuts agree with you is fantastic because something like this that you can find here at Costco is $11.49 but each of these is just peanuts and sea salt and each one is the total net weight is 56 ounces and so each jar here is 28 ounces so that's a good amount of peanut butter and it's especially nice because it's just the roasted peanuts and sea salt no extra added sugar now almond butter is more expensive but if that's what you need to eat they carry this here also so definitely look for this because I think you're going to find that the almond butter at the big box stores here and this is a nice organic one and again like the peanut butter it's just the nuts and some sea salt and you will find that if you have to get almond butter at your grocery store or at a specialty grocery store it can be really expensive but this is 27 ounces not unlike the peanut butter and actually I'm just looking on the back of this this is actually just organic roasted almonds there's no salt in here so if you are concerned about controlling your salt uh, then this is the perfect almond butter for you now it is more expensive you'll see over here this is $11.99 whereas two of these is only $11.49 but if you can't tolerate peanuts and you want a nut butter this almond butter is a good buy because this will be and I have seen it at my grocery store not this exact brand since this is the Kirkland brand but a smaller size will be more expensive at my grocery store and if you go to a specialty grocery store like a Whole Foods it's really expensive so if you need almond butter and you want to put this in your prepper pantry and this unopened usually has a shelf life anywhere from one year to two years so this can be a very good food to stock in your prepper pantry and it's perfect for making sandwiches when you're without power or without uh, clean running water uh, you've got some bread, you've got some kind of almond butter, you know, some nut butter like an almond butter, or you've got a peanut butter, you have some jam, maybe your own home can jam. I've showed you how to make a lot of jams, both low sugar and no sugar, and how to home can them, and you're all set. And don't forget to stock up on maple syrup. This is a wonderful alternative to using white cane sugar. You can bake with this. It's delicious on top of oatmeal. And even though, yes, it has a best use by date, maple syrup, as long as it's unopened, is a forever food. Now, once you open it, you should refrigerate it because there is water in maple syrup as opposed to honey, which is denser and can be opened and left uh, unrefrigerated. Maple syrup, once you do open it, you will want to refrigerate it. But put this in your prepper pantry. It's a forever food, and it's going to come in very handy as you start to bake without using white cane sugar. Now you know the Italian in me is going to tell you to stock up on olive oil. Yes, olive oil isn't a forever food and you'll want to use it within six months to a year of purchasing it. But if you use a lot of olive oil like me, being able to find a good quality olive oil like this for a good price, $13.99, you can't go wrong. This is an extra virgin olive oil and it's from Tuscany, so it's a one region olive oil. If you can find a one estate olive oil, all the better, but one region is very good too. Now, they have a wide selection of olive oils, all different grades, all different prices, all different amounts. But I really like to search out something that is an extra virgin olive oil and preferably from one region and preferably Italian if I'm not buying olive oil that's made here in Texas. Yes, we have olive ranches and I definitely like Texas olive oil, but this is a great price. Now, when it comes to stocking flour, I like to stock all-purpose flour and or bread flour. Both have had all the bran and the germ removed, so they do have a longer shelf life than whole grain flours. I tend to not stock whole grain flours because since they still have the bran and the germ in them, 
that's all of the oils as well that are in the bran and the germ that can then cause the flour to spoil faster. And so I like to avoid that because I may not use that flour up quick enough. So instead, because it, I know some people say it has a shelf life of a year, I think it really should be used within six months. So I prefer to stock real grain, the whole grain, the wheat berries, so the spelt berries, the einkorn berries, so on and so forth, and then grind them using my mock mill grain grinder. Yes, you do need a grain grinder. You can have a manual one or an electric one, but I like to use my grain grinder and then grind my grain fresh. And freshly ground whole grain flour really makes a beautiful baked good and a tasty one. And if you're in the market for a grain, a grain mill, which I'm telling you, I researched this so heavily, I wound up buying a mock mill. And if it's something that you wanna think about getting, a mock mill grain mill, and I just can't say enough good things about it, uh, I definitely have a coupon code for you, and I'll put a link uh, to my shopping guide in the description underneath this video where you can uh, retrieve that discount coupon code if you wanna buy a mock mill. And I have a whole bunch of other discount codes over there, so it's definitely worth checking out. But what I wanted to share here was they have 20 pounds, they're two 10 pound bags. They have 20 pounds of organic unbleached, which is what I like. I definitely like unbleached all purpose flour. And this happens to be also organic. So you've got organic unbleached all purpose flour, two 10 pound bags, and it's $16.79. Yes, flour's gone up, grain has gone up, rice has gone up, beans have gone up, everything's gone up in price. But this is definitely uh, something that you wanna stock. And stocking an all-purpose flour or a bread flour is a smart move because this is going to last longer in both your working pantry and your prepper pantry. You can probably get at least a, a good two years out of it. And even if you just put these in a, one of those five gallon buckets and throw in some bay leaves and it'll definitely stay fresh. However, last time I was here at Costco, a lady gave me a tip which I thought was fantastic. She, t she buys this and then she weighs out uh, it in like one pound, two pound, three, whatever amount of flour she wants to weigh out and she puts it in brown paper bags and then she puts it in a food saver bag and then she seals it and then she puts those into her bucket and then just puts the lid on. And then what she'll do is when she needs a pound of flour or two pounds of flour, whatever way she has stored them up, she'll take that out and she'll open it up and she'll have very fresh all purpose or, or a bread flour. And she was telling me that she had recently opened a bag of flour that she had uh, sealed up before the pandemic. It was like 2017 or something. And then she was opening it now. This last, I think I saw her like here maybe three months ago. So 2023 or 2022 maybe. And she said that it was fresh, it was fine. She had no problems at all with it and no bugs had gotten in, no rodentia, as I say, had gotten into the buckets. She was in good shape. And so there are a lot of options. And I have a video where I show you all the different ways to store various items to extend their shelf life. Uh, but this is a good buy if you're in the market for flour. Now they do have other all-purpose flour. It's not organic and it's not unbleached. At least it doesn't say unbleached on the packaging, but it is considerably less expensive. So that's also something that you can consider because that's a rather large bag. That's 50 pounds of all-purpose flour and it's $17.49. So if that fits better into your budget, you know I'm never gonna be a fuss budget and tell you you need organic, you need this, you need that. You know, as you're on your journey and you're able to allocate more money into your grocery budget as you, as you begin buying less processed foods and you start making more things homemade and you find you have a bigger grocery budget, then you can be on your journey to buying different things, maybe organic or unbleached or whatever the case may be but this is really an unbeatable price for 50 pounds for $17.49. Well, if you've been with me a while, you know I'm gonna tell you to stock different types of canned fish in your prepper pantry. And one of my favorite to stock 
is sardines. Now I know many of you tell me, oh Mary, I've never tried sardines and whatnot, but I do have a recipe for you and I'm so proud that so many of you have said, okay, I'm gonna trust Mary, I'm gonna try the recipe, and then you come back and you tell me that you love it. You never imagined you'd love sardines, but you do. These are high in omega-3, you can't go wrong. And these, especially for those of you who like it when they're skinless and boneless, that's exactly what these are. $10.99, you got six uh, cans here, and they are wild caught, uh, and certified wild caught and sustainable. So they're not just kind of saying something. Uh, it is certified, and they're in olive oil. These are such a good buy, and they're so good for you. This is a nutrient-dense food. Now they have a large variety of canned fish here, including different varieties of tuna, but they also do have the canned salmon, six cans. It is $15.99. Canned salmon has really gone up in price, but this is definitely something that's very good to keep in your prepper pantry. This lasts a long time, and it's a, a very nutrient dense food. This is wonderful to eat. It's easy to prepare. You can eat it right out of the can if you want, but you can also make some wonderful salmon cakes that I've shared with you before. So this is definitely something that you wanna think about keeping in your prepper pantry. Now, I just wanted to quickly show you this. If this is in your area, this is definitely something that's very good to get and it's on sale and there are eight cans here which for $5.69 can't be beat. And this is yellowfin tuna, and it's packed in extra virgin olive oil. So this is an unbeatable price. This is a really good buy. And I've got some great tuna recipes for you, including a Depression era tuna pie, which is one of the most tasty things my husband and I have enjoyed. So I'll be sure to link to that recipe. But if you're, if you're, uh, Costco carries this, this is the time to get this because that is some amazing price for yellowfin tuna. Now I just want to say I'm sharing with you the top 15 items you need to buy now to stock your prepper pantry. However, I've got a few bonus items for you so be sure to stay tuned for those. Another item you want to stock up and buy now for your prepper pantry is rice and you want to buy white rice because white rice has a longer shelf life than brown rice just like the flour brown rice with the bran and the germ intact but different than than whole grains which uh, can last a very long time brown rice doesn't last a long time it can go rancid very quickly so you want to store white rice but don't worry about it being white rice because you can improve the nutrition you make it, in, instead when you make it, don't use water, use bone broth, add a little butter, add a little sea salt, and now you've made something that's very nutritious. And this is a 25 pound bag of long grain white, white rice for 10.99. Now, if you like basmati, they've got that too. It is more expensive and it is a smaller package. It's 20 pounds and it's 19.99 but either one is an excellent option and can easily have its nutrition bumped up with bone broth, butter, and salt. Now this I just wanted to share as, a, as an aside, so to speak, because it's right next to the rice. Uh, and I think everybody always talks about stocking beans, dried beans in your prepper pantry, but this is all they have. It is not easy to find dried beans the way it used to be in the really big bags. Maybe it is in your area but not here, and I'm shocked that I can't even find pinto beans in Texas, at least a big bag of it. It used to be very common, but this is $12.99. They are organic, uh, but this is just a 10 pound bag, and they used to have the real big bags of beans, and for probably close to the same price, but that's $12.99 uh, for 10 pounds. Now, they are organic, but I often think that when it comes to dried beans, you really got to shop around because you probably can find them less than this. Now for a bonus item, I just want to mention that these big box stores often have a very large selection of herbs and spices, and you can never go wrong when it comes to stocking up on these sort of things. And I really like getting things like the paprika and the chili powder, the oregano, cumin, if they've got coriander, I like that. And these are all the ground or powdered versions. And I use a lot of these. You can get onion powder, you can get garlic powder. There's so many different ones you can stock up on. And 
like many of you have shared with me, I don't find that these really lose a lot of potency over time. I think sometimes you can take them out of your pantry after a number of years and they're still quite good. Uh, so I never worry about that and if I feel the flavor is a little less than maybe if it were you know, used within a year or so, then I just add a little more. And the nice thing is you bought it in a large size so you have plenty. Now they do sell uh, raw apple cider vinegar here, however, you know I'm going to tell you that it's always best to make it homemade and you don't need to make it from apple cider. Just make it from some apples that are maybe getting a little close to their prime, apple scraps, whatever you have on hand. Ferment it naturally. I have so many videos where I show you how to do this and I walk you through the whole 30-day process. I'll be sure to link to that. But if for any reason you do want to stock some in your prepper pantry uh, that's not homemade, and I definitely do that from time to time, you can get three bottles here for $9.99. Now, do I think this is gonna be as good as what's homemade? Probably not. However, if you like to use raw apple cider vinegar, or any apple cider vinegar for that matter, when making bone broth, this is probably a better option than using your homemade apple cider vinegar because the rawness, <laughs> that's a word, of this is basically going to be uh, destroyed during the cooking process. Uh, so having something like this on hand, or just an or most organic apple cider vinegars are gonna be raw. Uh, so if you want organic apple cider vinegar, uh, this is a good option to just stock in your prepper pantry, but only use as a backup to your homemade apple cider vinegar, which I think is gonna be richer and fresher, so to speak, uh, in terms of the level of good bacteria, the level of probiotics. Another bonus item, dried fruit. And these are dried figs. I love them, and what's so great about these is that they are just organic dried figs. There's no chemicals with these and no added sugar. And again, these big box stores, they have a huge selection of dried fruits. Just make sure that when you're looking at them, you find those that don't have any added sugar or added oil. Another bonus item, now you can soak and sprout your own pumpkin seeds or any seeds for that matter. But if you feel it a little lazy, they do sell sprouted pumpkin seeds here, which are great. You can grind them up, put them on your oatmeal, do anything you want with them. And they're $9.99. Now another bonus item I highly recommend you look for when you're at Costco or any big, big box store for that matter are canned tomatoes and these are diced tomatoes. These are so wonderful and make meal prep very easy. And I have a whole host of recipes for you how to make pantry meals with canned goods and I especially love canned tomatoes and I always stock up on these. And for $7.99, for eight cans of diced organic tomatoes, you can't go wrong. So be sure to consider looking, and take your time looking at all of the canned goods that your big box stores sell, like your Costco's and your Sam's, and see what items you like, because they usually have a big selection of canned goods, which are perfect for the prepper pantry, and perfect for making pantry meals, and making fast and easy pantry meals. Now, if you'd like more information about how to stock your prepper pantry, and how to do it on $5 more a week added to your grocery budget, then be sure to click on this video over here where I have a whole playlist that goes over that and more, including how best to store your food to extend its shelf life as long as possible. And I'll see you over there in my Texas Hill Country kitchen. Love and God bless.